My name is Dan. I'm from St. Petersburg, Russia. I work in a mobile game development company called Playme. And as you, as some of you may know, I love Hugs very much and trying to make it even better than it is already. So, uh, this talk is about how we integrated Hugs in our game. Uh, we have the Unity 3D client written in C Sharp and a Node.js server written in JavaScript and we needed some way to write game logic uh, that is shared between the client and server. And the answer is obviously Hugs. Uh, however, extending the technology stack should always uh, have a good reason, so we went through the alternatives. Here they are. Uh, we could mm, write JavaScript on client. We actually tried that before, but uh, it involves embedding uh, JavaScript runtime in the Unity 3D game. It's quite hard, heavy, and it requires a lot of boilerplate code and also, JavaScript is not the language you want to write a huge project in. Uh, another option is to write everything in C Sharp, uh, server, and client, and the logic. But uh, this probably could work, but that's just not for our team, because uh, we have this uh, server team that are really good with Node.js, and uh, it uh, would be just impractical to make them learn the .NET server uh, technologies and the infrastructure. Uh, another option is to run .NET in the Node.js. Uh, there are some solutions like the Ember.js, but uh, it has the same concerns uh, as embedding JavaScript on client. It's heavy and it's it's not, it's just too complex for us. Uh, the final option is to cross compile C sharp to GS, uh, but back then uh, every cross compiler was generating something really heavy and it was hard to reason about the performance and uh, debuggability. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so Hux uh, was the answer. A language with a powerful type system producing good output for both GS and C Sharp and a macro system uh, to automate uh, generating boilerplate, boilerplate code. So that fitted just right in. Uh, one important thing I, I'd like to note here is uh, it is important to make Hugs a first-class citizen in your development environment. So any potentially skeptical coder can easily get started with Hugs, and any non-coder can easily build the project, and you can easily deliver uh, Hugs fixes and updates for everyone in the team. So what I did is just included Hugs compiler right into our repository and wrote a simple build scripts uh, to build our logic and uh, hooked up a button in, button in the Unity editor. Uh, and that even allowed us to use the latest bleeding edge, edge Hux version without any obstacles and easily. Anyway, here's the uh, little video of our game. How do I press play here? Yes, yeah, looks like this. Uh, it's a pretty usual mobile game uh, you know, of the current popular genre. The whole game logic here is written in Hux. Uh, however, the other client stuff like the visualization, the UI, the networking, and other stuff is written in C Sharp. Uh, the server is running on Node.js and is written by our server guys in JavaScript, and Hux blends quite well into this. Okay. That's the game. Anyway, let's go. Uh, how do I? Okay. So what went particularly good for us? 
The main reason for us to use Hex uh, was the ability to compile for both C Sharp and JavaScript. It produces uh, readable code, which is not that important, but uh, still very useful for debugging in rare cases. And the performance is great. There are still some unnecessary bugs in, uh, in C Sharp target, but in general, the performance is uh, on par, at least, or even better than in, if we uh, would write the code uh, in our target languages directly because of the inlining abstracts and other stuff. Uh, another uh, thing that helped, that was a great help for us, is macros. Uh, for example, one requirement for uh, from our server team was to make the game logic code work with the user state represented as a simple JSON object, uh, and that every change to it is logged. So we wrote a macro-powered uh, data storage thing uh, to do that. Macros help here at least in two places. Uh, determining a type from a given property path, like user.name <laughs> here, uh, and generating read-only types for JSON object there, so they can only be changed through our set function, so it's safe, like this. We write like user.name value and macro is generating the path and the type check for uh, depending on the path. Anyway, uh, we also use macros for generating easy methods for calling our server API, APIs from the logic. Uh, and that's similar to hacks remoting, so I won't go into details. Uh, another good application of macros in our case was auto-generating glue code for c -sharp client. For example, uh, this small vector uh, structure. Uh, we generate a proper class for uh, representing the data on the C-sharp side. So it's a class that can be used from the C-sharp code. It has events and properties and everything. Okay. Uh, calling game logic methods from C-sharp is also easy uh, because we macro generate uh, the proxy code that takes C sharp types like array, dictionary, and converts it to hex types automatically with macros. So from the C sharp side, uh, you have a natural API, and one couldn't even notice uh, that there's a hex inside, so it's uh, just C sharp. Uh, also, with macros, we validate uh, static static game data, like object definitions or gameplay settings against the types uh, that we use in our game logic code. So we can be sure uh, that our game data is valid uh, without any runtime checking or writing additional validation code. Besides macros, another great hacks feature we use is abstracts. Uh, using those instead uh, of primitives for for all kinds of identifiers uh, brings a lot of benefits. Uh, for example, more readable code, more compile time safety since the types is different now, are different now. Uh, and together with macros, more compile time validation, uh, like for the definitions I mentioned before. For example, we implement the foreign key-like checks, uh, meaning that, uh, for example, we validate that some achievement definition points to the existing reward definition that's possible declaratively with abstracts and macros. Uh, and in general, we found a lot of use cases for abstracts. For example, we use abstracts to add methods to our JSON data and um, abstracts are also great for representing finite set, finite set of values for JSON data. And also with abstracts, we can have zero overhead null safety with explicit null handling that I appreciate, I appreciate personally. Okay. Uh, of course, it 
just can be all rainbows and unicorns, so there are some headache, headaches. Uh, the most problems we had is uh, inconsistent default values and integer overflows between C sharp and JavaScript targets. So sometimes we get different behavior on client and server because of this, and we yet to find uh, a good workaround for this. Another issue not related to the language itself uh, is IDE support. Yeah, I know the improvement that were presented today in Hex development Code Studio is awesome, but still C Sharp Crowd is used to Visual Studio and ReSharper, which are really great, and Hux still lacking in such great IDE support. Uh, my final nitpick is that Hux still kind of lacks visibility, so even though it's con constantly improving, it's still quite annoying to have to explain reasons to use Hux to new people. Uh, in the end, here are some common questions asked by C Sharpers in our team about X, about the method overloading, the uh, function syntax. It's surprisingly hard to grasp for C Sharpers, and uh, also short lambdas. C Sharpers are used to this. And it's just no comments. Okay, that was fast. If you have any questions, please ask. Um, thanks for the great talk. Uh, can you show a bit um, practically how the interoperability, how you interrupt with hacks, your, your hacks code from C Sharp? Oh. Do you need to use like special uh, patterns for, as you say, for the function, for the function callbacks and these kind of things? Uh, actually, it's just a single uh, entry point class that with the methods that uh, for each command there's a method like build something at these coordinates of do this have, time. Do you have Unity right now? Could you, uh, could you no, I'm it? sorry. Oh. Yeah, it's on my laptop. It's not okay. on my laptop. I mean. <laughs> um, what was the biggest problem that you faced when you decided to use hacks for game development? The biggest problem? Using hacks which you wouldn't have had in C Sharp, for example? Uh, I don't know. Hux is great. But the <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned the inconsistencies between targets, but that's the only problem, I think. It works quite well. Yeah, someone wondering, how did you integrate hacks into Unity build system? Uh, yeah, we just built uh, the assembly, the DLL file, with our logic from hacks, and we just use it in Unity. Right here. Okay, thank you.